uh, vectors. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, let's dive right into it. So uh, they say that, yeah, that these are the most important, um, that, yeah, vectors are the most important uh, family of data types in base R. And vectors apparently come in two delicious flavors. So there's the atomic vector, and lists and the thing with atomic vectors is that all the elements have to be of the same type um, and lists and we'll see that a bit later and lists uh, the, the elements can actually have different types um, and then there's something that's slightly related to uh, to vectors and and that's the null element which we'll get to as well uh, it's not. It's not a vector. It's closely related and generally serves a uh, role of a generic zero-length uh, vector. But, but like I said, we'll, we'll try to get to that. Well, we will. Um, and uh, we also um, uh, vectors can also have attributes, which are basically named uh, named a named list of arbitrary metadata. Uh, there's two particularly important uh, attributes. So the first being uh, dimension, which we uh, call using the, uh, we can use um, just the dim function for. And this will turn our vectors into matrices and arrays. And secondly, the, the class attribute, which powers the S3 object system, uh, which we'll get to as well. So factors, dates, times, data frames, and tibbles are all actually S3 objects, which means that they have their, uh, their class attributes uh, filled in. So the outline- Out of curiosity, was, sorry, quick question. Did he actually say what S3 stands for? I was just curious. I, I don't know if he said that. Or if this is one of those historical, like it came from S, so it's the third thing. Yeah. I actually looked a couple of weeks ago uh, ahead at the uh, S3 chapter, and I think that it was that, yeah, so S was the language before R, and then it came out, S3 came out in the third iteration of the S language or something like that. I could be wrong about that, but if memory serves me, then I think that's why it's called S3. So, yeah. Not important, <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> Like why I start off with that um, as this because I think they went they went S three um, uh, I can't remember the other object systems there was R six and then um, the third type that eludes me um, yeah but um, essentially the the whole chapter is broken up into these uh, sections so we're first going to start off talking about those atomic vectors those vectors that had the same type throughout. Uh, we'll talk about the attributes, um, the important ones like dim and class and then arbitrary ones. S3 atomic vectors, so atomic vectors uh, with, with a class attribute and uh, what that means for things like generic functions and so on, but we'll get to as well. Uh, lists followed by data frames and tibbles and then um, they uh, briefly talk about null, the null uh, vector. Um, which I actually have in these slides, but slightly out of place. Um, so I guess uh, let's start off with atomic vectors. And so there are four primary types of atomic vectors corresponding to base data types. Um, so there's, uh, there's logicals, integers, uh, doubles, and characters. Those are the like, sort of most common ones. Um, but there's also like some rare types. Uh, there's complex and raw. Uh, so just briefly complex, like complex numbers, like, uh, you know, those whole real and imaginary part things, which don't get used too much in statistics. So they don't spend too much time at all speaking about complex, um, vectors and then raw, which is, um, I believe like the actual bit stream, uh, that comes from, uh, from objects, but again, not something that gets used all too much in, uh, in stats. So uh, not really spoken about that much in, in, uh, in this chapter, at least. So there's this like hierarchy. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys can actually see my mouse, but um, yeah, uh, there's this hierarchy uh, where you've got vectors and you get atomic vectors and then the four base types and integer and doubles are both uh, numeric um, types. So uh, yeah, just how you can create these vectors uh, in, this, in the following lines. Um, so logical vectors, you know, your true or false uh, elements, you can also just use T or F. Uh, 
the integer uh, vectors, you uh, have the suffix of an uppercase L, which um, I think they mentioned has something to do with the roots in, uh, in C++, where the L stands for a long integer type, which I think refers to the uh, sort of bit length of the integers. Uh, double vectors, which take decimal points, and character vectors, uh, which take strings, uh, not just characters, but full, full strings. Um, yeah, so uh, not to beat a dead horse, but um, like all, all the elements uh, have the same types, and that's like the sort of defining characteristic of these atomic vectors. And you can use type of to determine well, the type of the, the vector. Cool. Uh, shall I move on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Sorry, Alan, it looks like you were going to say something, but you were muted. <laughs> yeah, I was saying something, but I was muted. <laughs> let's, let's move on. <laughs> Jeez, the amount of times I've done that in meetings is actually getting embarrassing now, given that we've been doing this whole COVID thing for a while. So anyway. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So um, moving on then to uh, let's talk about NAs, testing and coercion. Uh, so they actually start off saying is that uh, NAs are infectious, right? Uh, so any sort of operation that you do with an NA is going to give you another NA. So if you go like, uh, if you try to do comparison, like um, NA is greater than five, for example, you get an NA out of it. Or if you go NA, you want to find out if something is NA, you go like NA equals equals NA, it won't give you a true or false value. It'll just give you NA. So it's just whatever you seem to do with these things, like it just sort of propagates that, that value of NA um, uh, basically like as the result of whatever your operation was. Um, so um, yeah, um, then actually just testing the type of vectors. So you can use the is um, like family of, of methods in order to test. So for example, is integer to test if your atomic vectors are uh, integer atomic vectors. Um, and then there's actual uh, type coercion. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how comfortable uh, people are with this concept, but um, I think this example kind of shows what, uh, what, what happens. Um, so there's a fixed order of uh, type coercion, which goes character to double to integer to logical. And like for me, it was a lot clearer when I when I did this um, as an example. Um, so we know that these atomic vectors you knew have the same type throughout. So in the first case, when we just go um, create a vector with one element, uh, one logical element, great, that's no problem because the one and only element is. Uh, it can, it's, it's the same type as itself, right? So no, not a problem. But then what happens if we've got our logical value and our integer value? So the, the logical value uh, gets coerced into a uh, integer value of, of one. And if it was false, it would have been zero. Um, so it's sort of, it, it's following that, that coercion um, order, I guess. Um, and then oh, one second, uh, Shem raised his hand. Yeah, Shem? Shem? Uh, yeah, you've been muted. Uh, you can type it in the chat as well if you have a question, if your microphone is non, non working. Wait, there's something in the chat. Oh. That's just me. <laughs> or it might have been an accident. Um, I guess we can keep uh, going. Oh, no, never mind. That's right, integer without L. I, I think it would assume it was a... a... Um, double? I think it depends if there's a if there's a decimal point. Um, should we just try it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Let's just try it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. 
Okay, so let's go uh, A is equal to C of two, three, four. Okay, type of A, double. <laughs> okay. Yeah, learning something new. Okay, that's interesting. So it does do what you, what you said it does, yeah. Oh, you guys, there must be uh, reasons for that, but I would assume we're like in statistics at least we're more used to using doubles and they're more useful numerical types like unless you're doing like factors for categorical stuff I don't know how much you really need to use integers. Oh yeah, sometimes you need to use integers uh, just, just, just for you to be sure. Uh, it's, it's really rare, a rare case. It's, for me, I prefer to save the data or the columns as, as doubles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so I suppose then that's the, that's the default, like, behavior then. If you, if you leave off the L, we've got, we've got a double. Right. Um, Okay, cool. So I guess the last thing then is just for um, if we if we've got a, a character like a string type, um, basically coerces everything else into into a string, which I guess uh, makes sense then given the given the um, the order hierarchy. Um, okay, cool. Let me move on to the next slide. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I did um, put this slightly out of place. Um, so I see that. Um, yeah, just looking at the chat. Um, cool. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the null element um, actually has a unique um, has a unique type, and that's null. The length of it's going to be zero. It can't have any attributes, and it's used for representing an empty vector. Um, and this can be like, for example, in a function that's got multiple arguments and uh, you, you, you leave it out and that, that null value will represent the absence of it. Um, so this is uh, different to NA, which um, indicates that the element of a vector is actually absent. And I found this a bit like confusing, uh, I guess, but uh, it's like the SQL null is equivalent to R's and A's um, in, in that it's a missingness of a value, um, not representing like the like a null uh, vector. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, moving on to attributes, which um, which are basically name value pairs that are attached that that attach to the metadata of the, of an actual object. Um, so we'll see some examples of this. Uh, firstly, we can uh, get and set individual attributes with the attr um, function, and we can do this. Um, well, I did this by uh, creating first a, a, a vector. And then setting the x um, attributes uh, to a b c d e f, um, very creative. But um, yeah, that's that's how you would do it, like for uh, one at a time. Uh, then you can actually access them using the same uh, in the same way, just without the assignment operator. Um, so now, basically, this a um, vector has an attribute called x with this value. And something that we can do as well is use the, uh, the structure function to set these things uh, on mass. Um, so again, just the same uh, values for the vector, set the X attributes to be uh, the first six letters of the alphabet and set the Y uh, attributes to be Y because why not? Um, and we can also just get these, uh, these attributes using the attributes uh, function. And that's, um, that's basically how, how we can set these name value pairs that attach themselves to vectors. Uh, so there are some important, some very important ones, uh, uh, which we'll get to after these, this whole discussion on the ephemeralness of them, which I noticed that on the Slack channel, people were uh, talking about. 
Um, so I was, uh, when I was reading this, sorry, when I was reading this, I had to wait until later on to understand, like to get a working example for myself. Like, well, when do I need this if I have a list? Just like one, two, three. Like, okay, why should I add attributes there anyway? But then uh, I've come up with just one example. For example, if you have uh, a, a list of grades for, for, for students, then you could add attributes, for example, for the mean or, or, or the average or their year in, in that sense. So with that example, I was like, okay, that could be useful. Yeah. yeah. Um, that actually um, makes me think of something that came up uh, at work today when I actually made use of this. And I was like, hang on a second, this could actually work. Um, but the same sort of example where um, each list, I created a list um, that uh, per, per month, because I was looking at, at data that, uh, that ran across various months, and each summary statistic, very similarly, I just, uh, I, I gave it a name, uh, like, like you did. Um, so yeah, I guess the stuff is coming in uh, handy already. <laughs> um, but this, this I, I guess um, I found a bit strange as well in that like, we've got these attributes that uh, we defined in the previous slide. So great, it's, there's uh, X and Y and um, we can call them and, and find them uh, using the attributes function and we can see what their values are. But as soon as I subset it or I call like a summary function on it, like the attributes disappear. So that's like the whole thing about them being ephemeral, right? Is that like, they just, they just don't stick around when, when you like do those operations, any sort of operations on them. Um, and one thing that they go on to say is that only two attributes, and there's a typo there, uh, only two attributes are routinely preserved. Uh, so names and dim, which we're gonna get to uh, pretty soon. Um, but also, if you want to preserve uh, other attributes, then you can create your own S3 class, which I guess we'll get to later on in the, in the book. Um, but um, yeah, I thought it was kind of important to see that like names, for example, is itself a character vector uh, that, that gives each element in your original vector a name. It's kind of like weird to think about, but I think the examples also make it a bit clearer. Uh, and dim as well is, is an integer vector that um, we'll use to turn our vectors into matrices uh, or arrays. So um, yeah, uh, looking then at the at names, um, there's three ways to name a vector. Uh, we can do it when we create it. So the- Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. So I still have a question, please. <laughs> so my, my PC is like a little bit old, I guess, because sometimes the camera comes <laughs> and it goes away and today I can see it. Yeah. So the question is, okay, now, um, so yeah, just for example, this screen where you assign a, the variable a to one, in this case, we are not assigning an integer in this case, right? Was, sorry, which, which example is that? This example at the screen where we have a, 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 a equals to one, b equals yes, to yes. two, c equals three. So does that mean we are assigning an integer one to a, integer two to b, integer three to c, or we are assigning a double variable to them? Yeah, I'd imagine that would be a double then. Uh, yeah. based off of so it's a double, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like um, uh, I was like trying to use today um, a particular um, the package for Python to R. Uh, so there, I saw there was an issue to convert a um, Python variable to R, typically because of this issue, because an oh, integer really? in R is attached with that L, and in Python it's only an 
in Kija. So when you do such kind of conversion, there's kind of a problem. So <laughs> I just understand it now that you, uh, when you are presenting that we need to typically use DAO for the integer. So it means, I mean, a lot of people are just using this as supposed, is it supposed to be a use this to assign integer? <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 Look, I mean, this is, um, I was completely under the impression that if you just had it as a one, I mean, that would be an integer, but um, yeah, I guess that's why we're here. <laughs> to <do this. laughs> Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Um, all right, so um, <clears throat> the, the next way that we can go ahead and create, um, uh, we'll set the, the names attribute is by explicitly using this name uh, function. Uh, we just say names of x is equal to uh, the, the character vector a, b, and c. And that's going to correspond to the uh, to to the elements of our uh, double vector um, uh, one, two, and three. Um, I think this quite nicely shows how your names, though, are uh, character vectors themselves, because we're actually creating this uh, C A B C, and we can see quite clearly that this is a character vector. Um, so yeah. Um, we've got that the actual names attribute itself of an atomic vector is going to be a character vector. Um, and then finally, there's uh, an, an, a last inline way to, to set the, the names using the set names method, which is, um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You give it your, your, your vector and then the names that you would like to set. Cool. Um, so then moving on to uh, the dimension attributes. So this is another one of those special attributes, um, uh, names and dim being the two sort of special ones. Uh, and adding uh, the dim attribute to a vector allows it to behave like a two-dimensional matrix or a multi-dimensional array. So effectively, we can change these vectors um, uh, behavior yeah, into, into multi, I'm still not clear exactly how a two dimensional array would be different to a matrix, but um, yeah. So uh, we've got a few ways that, that we can do this. So um, the first way that we can do this is by defining uh, two scalar arguments for, um, for our character vector, sorry, for our uh, double vector. So we've created this, uh, a, a, a vector from one to six, uh, specify the number of rows, specify the number of columns. And if we call dim of A, well, we get the attributes back and uh, the attributes um, being uh, what we said before. Um, we can also just specify a multi-dimensional array. So this is going to be three dimensions over here, with the dimension being two, three, and then two again. Uh, we can call the, um, the um, a dimension um, uh, function to, to see what they are. Um, and finally, we can sort of do this explicitly, kind of like how we did with names, uh, by setting the dim of C to be uh, the, um, the, the, the vector 3, 2. I guess one thing that I left out over here is that uh, I could have called attributes of uh, any one of these and seen what the dimension, um, what the dimension attribute is. Um, cool. So I think, um, yeah, some other stuff that they mentioned uh, is that a vector without a dim attribute um, set is often thought of as uh, one dimension, as one dimensional, but it actually has uh, null dimensions. And uh, you can also have matrices with, single, with a single row or single column or arrays uh, just with a single dimension. Uh, so it seems like some of these things are kind of like interchangeably used. Um, mm. Yeah. For example, um, uh, a, a matrix is a is like a one-dimensional array. Would it not be two dimensions? No, it will be one dimension. Because so, for example, if you run uh, array, if, if if you run the array that one there B, and and, and you, you try to see it, it's more it's going to be a collection of of matrices. Okay, 
Um, so should I do str? Um, no, 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 uh, this, this, this normally comes in handy uh, when, when you're trying to do like a convolution of, of images or convolution of, of, of different vectors and matrices. Uh, so they, they, they always deal with, uh, with such kind of arrays, which are sometimes called uh, uh, tuples, if I pronounce the word right. Okay. Uh, this when I also un understood what it is. It was really weird for me to to, to think about. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like still yeah, not like entirely clear to me if I'm being honest. The sort of relationship between matrices and arrays, uh, given that they both have the dimension attribute. Well, yeah, I suppose I'm completely lost too. I mean. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm lost. Can you come on again? <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing we could do is we could just see what uh, attributes uh, A and B would have. Okay. So we've got one array. So we can go attributes. Ah, that's not how you spell it. Um, B. So this is our array. It just has a dim and then a also neither of them have a class attribute okay mm -hmm. so it's literally the dimension finds them so the array what does that mean two three two what the okay yeah, yeah. so, so what, what you could do you could pick the first uh, the first array in b then you look at the dimension it should okay. be two three Oh, am I doing yeah. something wrong here? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I think the subsetting is odd. Could you just use one bracket? That's, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have to do this in the next chapter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to subset it. Okay, that was just a guess. <laughs> oh, I can't figure it out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> He's got it. Yeah. Oh God. If I understood okay. it correctly, matrices can only be flat shapes, right? Like rows by columns, whereas arrays can be kind of just endless. You can have a two by four by seven, whatever n dimensional array, which I think it's easy to imagine in the third dimension, and then gets pretty difficult yeah. for me at least <laughs> Let's move past that. In that case. If we had to create an, an array, a two-dimensional array, is that any different from a matrix? Yeah. That's what I'm curious about. Like, I'm not sure. Sorry, what did you say? If we create, like, so let's take, um, where's that piece of code? Yeah. If we take this uh, and we had to actually create a um, two-dimensional array, is that the same as a matrix? Uh, it, it it's not it will be it will look like a matrix but it won't behave like a matrix it will behave like a, like an array so we might get problems when we are subsetting hmm. what surprises me is that the attributes are completely the same of yeah the yeah so they'll, they'll be the same so could you transpose uh, an array, like if you call this P on it, does it work as a matrix does? Oh, uh, I think, yeah, so uh, we could take that as an example. We could transpose the matrix, but then it won't work on the array. No, they both work. Working. That's right. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what about, because matrix can only have a single um, data type. Are arrays, yes, also atomic? 
so because it came under the atomic vectors uh yeah it must be okay so the difference is there <laughs> but then could you but what about if it is the two and the, the original uh, array could it could it also use transpose yeah oh could, could you transpose to... a two by three by two array yeah what happens with uh. that Oh. <laughs> like, did it, did did he like subtly induce the array to becoming a matrix when we call it? Let's see. Okay, so now B is three dimensional, so T of B, not a oh, matrix. I think it induced it to be a matrix. That's my guess. It did coercion. Okay. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> Well, maybe it's something to ask on the Slack channel. Um, okay, so we figured out that there's a lot we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but now actually, uh, we, we, we have something which will happen later on, uh, but we, if it's an array, like a two by three by, by two array, then we use instead of T. We lost so it for a second. So in, in, instead of using T, the transpose, we use another function to, to do the transpose. Okay. Let's get to that. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Okay, cool. Um, yes, all right. So uh, we're off to now not just atomic vectors, but S3 atomic vectors. Um, so these are like atomic vectors, except they also have a class attributes, which uh, turns the object into an S3 object. Uh, so it means that it's going to behave differently uh, from a regular vector when passed into ge generic functions. So there's four important S3 vectors in, in base R. Um, so we'll go through each of them, but uh, it's a factor, a date, a POSIX CT, and then diff time. Um, um, yeah. So why S3 atomic vectors? Why S3? Uh, why the previous one I just called vectors and this one S3 atomic vectors? Yeah, so I think we'll, we'll get to that chapter in uh, the advanced R book um, where they actually talk more about the S3 object system. And uh, like, um, yeah, that that's one of the three or I don't know, there's a bunch of ways to do uh, Object oriented programming in R, and I think S3 is just the simplest way. Uh, so, um, S3 is an object in R? I think they're all objects. I think a, 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 an atomic vector is definitely an object. I think everything's an object. Everything um, is an object, but what in particular is S3 as well? Say again, sorry, I missed that. Yeah, everything is object, but what S3 means? Um, oh, so, <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> yeah, we were just discussing this. Um, we think we think S three is based on because R came from the S language, and the three is because the S object came out in S version three. We think. Um, yeah. But I think it's just R's version of like the easiest object oriented class it got as the S three. Okay, so. Yeah, so, okay, cool. So even factor is not um, based, I mean, the based atomic vectors. Yeah. Factor, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think we're in action, um, like how, well, I mean, it's they all sort of have the same uh, characteristic that uh, the class, the class attributes is um, is set. So I'm just going to fast forward to the bottom of the screen, uh, where after creating a factor, looking at the attributes of x, which was a which was a um, a factor vector, um, the yeah, the class attribute set. Um, so I think like we've probably all worked um, with uh, with factors. Um, I think there's something in the chat. Um, It'll end in like one uh, minute. Just rejoin the link again. Oh, okay, cool. Um, 
Yeah, so, so it's useful categorical data. Uh, it can only contain predefined values, and it's built on top of an integer vector, um, so not a character vector. And it's got two attributes, a uh, class being a uh, factor, and the levels which define what's actually allowed to, um, to be in the, uh, in, in the vector. So over here, we've got the factor that's uh, A, B, B, A. The two levels are A and B. And if we actually go type of, well, it's going to be an integer because that's the type of, that's the atomic type of vector that uh, it's actually uh, built on. All right. Cool. So here, uh, X is a factor, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And the type is integer. So factor is integer. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's exactly that. It's exactly that. So the base, um, the base vector type is going to be, um, is going to be an integer. Um, ah, I see Manu has joined. Uh, Manu is a colleague of mine. <laughs> he joined a bit late. <laughs> it's all good. Um, cool. Yeah. So we're just busy. Um, uh, we're just busy talking about um, S3 atomic vectors. Uh, so basically, we're talking about uh, factor types in uh, in R. And essentially, so can, yeah. Let's go back to the previous slide. From this, so, yeah, from this picture, I was supposed to see like factor belong to character, for instance, yeah. because I mean, but it falls under numeric and uh, we obviously know that a factor are characters, right? Can we have a factor, factor with integers instead with values inside? Yes. Yeah, I think that's how, how I was also a bit surprised because I would have just assumed that it was going to be based on character vectors. Yeah, but, it will be based on character, right? Yeah. Okay. But there, there was, um, yeah, there was yeah. something they mentioned about. Yeah, here. Um, I think it makes sense talking. if you think about the way R stores objects. If you think about chapter two, how they have the global string pool, I assume there's yeah. like memory reasons. And additionally, with factors being stored as integers, I think it's probably easier down the road to do things like one is bigger than two or two is less than three, um, which are kind of inherent in factors. So I think if you think about how R stores things and the stuff you want to do with a factor, I think it makes sense to some degree. But um, my question is like um, uh, a factor, I mean, the the, the vector, I mean, we declare here um, is our own character inside, right? Can we have a factor where we have the vector is one, two, three, four, we can't, right? Um, yes, yeah, so I think if you unclass it, it becomes easier to see. Like, um, so do that, we've got x, we know that this is our, um, our vector, so do that, and what we find is that actually under the hood, it's just printing it out, so if you remember mm. that the S3-ness of it is like, it changes like the whole printing of it, um, so that's what sort of makes makes it look like in this case that uh, there, it's an A, a B, a B, and an A, but really it's, um, it's a one, a two, a two, and a one. So if I go x of two, which is that b, and I say, is it equal to two? It says false, <laughs> which is not what I expect. <laughs> um, but yeah. is it the position, is this telling us the position not yet? The T I are, oh, okay. Yeah. You are comparing the x, the value at position two to equals to two, which shouldn't be to do as well. Or if I unclass it, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 That if it's of a different class, it doesn't seem to give you that equals. But what, if, um, what the function on class do? Uh, it removes the the class attribute. So if we go class of n and I go attributes of all that's left is the levels. Uh, as opposed to uh, levels in the class. Um, I think let's um, let's move on just because I'm, I'm a bit wary of and we are just about halfway. 
Um, um, so yeah, the the next uh, the next sort of bit of it is just ordered factors, which is just like factors except uh, we're imposing order on the on on, on the on the vector. Um, yeah, so I think you just you just uh, do that by providing levels and call them ordered as opposed to. Um, okay, cool. So dates as well are S3 uh, S3 object types, um, and these are built on top of double vectors. So they have a, a class that's uh, that's date and no other attributes. So again, uh, got the the date class, uh, which is um, which is what makes it an S3 object. Um, so um, yeah, just the, the create this variable, which is the day the slide was rendered, which was uh, today because I was running late. Uh, but uh, we just call system .date and great, it prints it out like that. Even though it's a double under the hood, it's printing it out like this because of um, the class attributes. So that's um, the, the how the, it affects the generic functions. So if we call type of, then surprisingly, it's going to be a double, not anything to do with a date. Um, so I think that's similar in, in a sense to how we went like type of for the factor type um, and, and a, um, a numeric type because uh, it's built on top of that. Um, attributes um, got the uh, class being a date class, and this is also uh, pretty interesting that you unclass this. And what you get out is uh, the number of days since um, the 1st of January, 1970. Um, so what, this really is a double, um, it's a double value. But the fact that it gets this class um, of date, the attributes of date, causes it to be printed out in a, in a dates kind of way. Um, so this is something that we'll see um, continue uh, with date times as well. So like dates, they're also built on, uh, on double vectors. And uh, there's two ways of doing this. There's POSIX CT and POSIX uh, LT, which again, I think there's a typo I put there. Uh, but we'll focus on uh, POSIX uh, CT. So I created a, a time which was then, as in like way back then in 2018. Uh, so as POSIX CT and it, Gets this, uh, gets this value and a, and a time zone of UTC. And if we just print it out, then we get this, um, this sort of value over here. Um, and yeah, let's not forget that it was actually built on, uh, on a double vector. Uh, so if I go type of uh, then, well, we get, uh, we get. So looking then at the attributes of it, uh, as, as promised, uh, it has a class, um, uh, a class attribute, and in this case, we've got POSIX CT and POSIX T. And I suspect this is to do with subclassing, but um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll get to that as we uh, continue this, uh, continue reading the book. Um, yeah, the other attribute that it's got is the the time zone attribute. Cool. Um, so, and I just put a note for why multiple classes there. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so next up, we've got um, durations, which are again also S three um, atomic vectors. Um, so uh, we can ex we know that because it's an S3 atomic vector, we can expect to, to have a, a class attribute. Um, but durations, they represent the amount of time between uh, dates or dates times. Uh, they're built on top of doubles. And um, yeah, they have a, a units attribute that, that actually like, uh, it tells you how to interpret the value there. So if I create a diff time of, uh, of one, um, with with the units being uh, week uh, weeks, um, well, when I print it out, it, it's it's the the way it's printed out is also dependent on the unit, which tells you how to interpret the how to interpret the value. Um, 
So if we look at the attributes, then uh, as, as promised, uh, the class attribute is, is, is a diff time, um, which again, that will affect how the, the printing is done and the units uh, method, uh, method, the units attributes, which is, uh, which is weeks. So yeah, we can also create days and, and different types of, of units uh, like this. Um, and that's basically um, uh, other like uh, important base R uh, S3 uh, vector time. Um, and yeah, I think that that's basically, that's basically it for S3 objects from base R um, for now. Uh, well, S3 vectors, I should say, because uh, data frames are also uh, S3 objects, if I remember correctly. Um, but we'll get to that. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Hello? Yeah. Uh, you said that data frame has also S3 vectors? Um, not vectors, but I think S3 objects. Ah, okay, S3 objects, right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so if we say these vectors are S3 atomic vectors, and what about the previous vectors? Are only their name is only atomic vectors, not anything atomic vectors? Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. They are yeah. only are, are atomic vectors. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So it's just the fact that my understanding is that the fact that these all these guys have um, the class attribute mm -hmm. is what defines them as being S3. Ah. That's yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the previous ones, uh, they don't have class? The, the, these ones do. Like date times do, dates do, factors do. Um, yeah, so the class of factors, factor, and so on. But like once we were all, like all the way back here, like mm -hmm. these, none of these had the class attributes. Uh, it's like this over here, like when I created that. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a contrived example, but still, it's. Um, it's, it doesn't have, uh, yeah, it doesn't have the, the class, um, the class attributes. So really these, these ones over here, um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. From base. yeah. So I really get the intuition now to differentiate between the previous one and this one. So the previous one, just the atomic vector, they don't have class, right? They don't, yes. look to, uh, and this one, they do have class. Exactly. Ah, okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. The other ones are classless. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, this is a good intuition for me because I would always be confused but with that. Is, I think it's something good for me. Yeah, like, well, I was gonna say, I think uh, for me it was like, a, lists were a bit of a like, sort of, because I was like, well, how are lists any different to vectors? And I think this cleared it up a little bit for me. But like, one thing that we saw earlier with, uh, with vectors, because um, I mean, I'd sort of been thinking about them very interchangeably, lists and vectors. And one thing that we saw earlier with vectors was the whole, like, you know, the the coercion thing, right? So they always have to be of the same type. Whereas uh, for lists, the, each element can basically be any type. In fact, each element in a list can itself be another list, um, mm -hmm. which um, gets coercion-y. Um, uh, um, so, it's just a reference. The list itself holds a reference to the object. So, every element of the list is actually a reference and thus the same type. But um, we don't think about it like that. We think about it as each element being its own um, actual object. So, um, because the actual um, list is made up of uh, references, the total size could actually be a lot smaller than, than you might expect. So if we use the lobster package and uh, get the object size of, of, um, of the empty cars uh, uh, toy data frame, uh, we get that it's uh, 7,208 bytes, but repeating this four times, uh, we get the object size and, and it's only like what 80 bytes uh, bigger and I think that's just because it's, it's only holding the list itself is only holding the the reference to that 
um, to the additional ones. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I guess that's basically what's going on over here. Um, so yeah, yeah, I have a question. So, so the list can contain S three atomic vectors. Yes, my understanding is yes. Because um, uh, from I think the, the list can take anything because it's always just holding essentially a reference. Uh, okay, because I don't know. Okay, or well, maybe we can try and see because. From the book, when I read, they only say that uh, the list contain atomic vectors. So it doesn't categorically say it contain atomic vectors and S3 atomic vectors. I'm not sure. We have, uh, so we're pretty sure that X is, uh, is an S3 vector. So we can go uh, my list is equal to list of X. And yeah. That that'll be um, that'll be our S three vector. So if I actually just reference it, yeah, the referencing thing is still a bit funny to me, to be honest. But anyway, um, so I can just hit attributes of this, uh, and yeah, we get that. We're pretty convinced that it's holding uh, that that yeah that that's an S three uh, atomic vector. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, um, confusingly or not confusingly, I don't know, but um, lists can contain lists, which can contain lists, and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, that's uh, basically what L3 is doing over here. Um, so, L4. We've got a list which contains another list and then a vector. And if we check the structure of it, that's exactly what's going on, which is not surprising. But I think the next slide gets a bit surprising. Um, if you've got a, a vector that contains a list and another vector, because we know that an atomic vector can only contain the same type, mm -hmm. then even yeah we had this as as a vector that's how we defined it it actually changes the structure of it to a list so so that was pretty counterintuitive to me i mean yeah the difference over here being that um here we've got a list that can, that's happily going to contain every, any different kinds any different types i should say uh, so it contains a list and it contains a vector. But then contrasting this with the following example, uh, this vector, even though it's, uh, it's recalling, we, we're asking it to create us a vector, it will actually return a list. Um, yeah, so that's what that does. Uh, that was a bit surprising to me. And another thing it does, uh, you, you uh, see you the So, sorry. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Another thing, uh, when, when we use C or combine, whatever, uh, what it does, it changes the structure. So it, it ignores the structure of the first list. Yes. So it completely flattens it, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so the final example that they give is uh, combining uh, to get a little more uh, I mean, than L5. Um, cool. So I think a few other functions that we can use. So we can use type of and type of list will be a list. We test for its listiness by going is dot list, and just uh, the where these things were created using uh, atomic vectors. Um, cool. Yes. Yeah. Say yeah. again. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, 
Um, all I've been using R now, always I see, I'm using vector to create um, list. I mean, when do we really use list? Because all I can see example, I mean, um, uh, is creating vectors using C, but when do we really use the list? So yeah. data frames are, are lists, right? List of vectors, yeah. yeah. Oh, data frames are lists? Yeah, they're, they're a, a yeah, list of vectors. Oh, okay. So if data frames are lists, then I'm, I'm totally fine. Yeah, I think data frames tables as well, uh, list of vectors. Um, yeah. Um, the, I guess the confusing thing for me over here was that um, it's it almost like if, if we just take this piece of code as an example, we've got DF1 as a data frame. Um, okay, that, that's the structure with X and then with over here. And if we look at the attributes of df1, we've said that 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 a data frame is a list of vectors, right? Uh, but it's it's still got this class attributes over here, and they also say that um, that these things are um, that, that they're s3 vectors. So it seems to me like there's like like a list is like a subtype of vector in a way. Um, that's that's sort of my understanding over here, but. Um, yeah, maybe it's something else uh, to bring up. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know. I don't know if I've explained like my confusion here very well. Um, how I understand, uh, how I understand this is um, if I read it from bottom down, but bottom up, it's more of like uh, a table is a collection of lists, a sample a data frame and the list is I don't know, a collection of uh, vectors. Or you could okay. say they build onto the table, the, the, the tables and data frames build on two lists, uh, same for the list and, and vectors. Yeah, so, okay. So we know- I've been referring to Tony from uh, cohort one made really great, like a really great review slide of all the objects. Um, I just linked it in the chat. I've been like looking at that. That helps me wrap my head around how everything relates to each other. Um. Uh, it's, it's loading for me. Um. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I thought this was okay. like a yeah. really helpful yeah. visualization of how everything falls cool. into everything else. So yeah, I think cool. everything's kind of in a list, or mm. everything can be a list. Okay. Yeah. Or, or everything can be a vector. <laughs> and a vector. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. So in this picture, what is the relationship between the atomic and the list? Atomic and the list, because I can see a dotted arrow across there. So what's the relationship between that? So the idea is that you can have an atomic, I think the only difference here is atomics have to be a single type. So if you think of like a row or a, a column in a data frame, right? Those are vectors, atomic vectors, so you can only have a a column which is all either character or is either integer or is um, double or I guess date time. Yeah. So vector is everything in R is vector, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is very correct. Everything, everything is R. a vector. <laughs> Yeah, whether it's X3 vector or it's S3 atomic or it's no R atomic, normal atomic vector, everything is vector in R. Yes. So, so R mm -hmm. is a vectorized language. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting. As I already said. Yeah, this really makes sense. 
because I was like going to ask a question before uh, that how can you relate the vector because in the book we have the first vector where we see the atomic and stuff and now in the current slide we are doing we have another arrow that comes as a vector list and I was to ask questions so what's the relationship in the previous we have only single arrow but now I can see the arrows diverging in different directions Okay. So a list is also a vector, but it's a vector in that all of its atomic types are references. I guess that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, sure, cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah, that, that's, that brings back nicely, like, um, exactly with the whole, like, reference thing. Um, so... Yeah, I guess the other the other things that, that data frames have, the other attributes are uh, row names and, and names as well. Um, so, yeah, from data frames to tibbles. So apparently frustration with data frames uh, led to tibbles, and this is how you create one, uh, one of several ways, but uh, it's, still, it's still just a list of vectors. Um, the attributes uh, that it has, so, it's pretty much the same as like your data frame, but uh, you've got these two extra classes associated with them as well. Um, so, so far they seem pretty much the same as, as data frames, uh, but wait. Um, so what do we know, well, what they tell us about uh, tibbles is that they're lazy and surly. Uh, so they won't do anything unless you explicitly tell them to do it and they complain a lot. Um, so, um, yeah, the thing is with um, uh, with data frames is that I think the default behavior uh, is that they'll actually coerce uh, strings in, into factors. So you can override that by strings as factors uh, equals false. Um, but uh, tibbles won't do that. Um, and another thing that, uh, that they won't do is they won't automatically convert uh, non-syntactic names. So for example, uh, with a data frame, it converts this one name over here to X1, but a tibble, because it's lazy, will just keep it as that non-syntactic name. Um, so um, another thing that uh, tibbles don't, don't do is that they won't support the, the row names um, uh, attribute, and the, that metadata. I think there was an argument in the book saying how it's metadata, but really it should be kept as, uh, as data. Um, another thing uh, is that they have a, a nicer print method and uh, the subsetting is a bit more consistent. So that, that the square bracket operator uh, will just always return a tibble and the, uh, the dollar sign that won't do partial matching. Um, so it's got it's got that that sort of behavior, um, and yeah. So there's we said that um, data frames were lists of vectors, but we can also have uh, list columns over here. Um, so the way that that works is by using this this uh, the, the I method, um, and yeah. So. I guess what's actually happening over here is that um, there's this data frame that, uh, well, let, let me take a step back. There's, there's two ways to do this. The first, we just create a data frame with one, uh, with one column, x, uh, one, one, two, three. Then we can actually go ahead and set this y column to be a list. And the list over here is actually going to have uh, three, um, uh, uh, three elements in it. And, and that's, uh, that's totally fine, apparently. So we've actually got a, a, a column that is a list. Um, and another way to do this is by defining it sort of upfront. So you create a data frame, uh, you've got your, your, uh, your usual sort of vector over here. And if you want to do it in this way, then you have to use the, the I method. But effectively, what happens over here is the same sort of thing, and you get those, those elements of that column uh, basically being lists themselves. Yeah. Cool. 
So this is uh, easier to do with, uh, with tibbles. Um, so whereas previously we had to use that I method uh, for, uh, for data frames, uh, we can just go ahead and do that um, like just directly over here. Um, and another thing that you'll notice is that the print method is, is kind of different that, than it was uh, with, uh, with in the data frame uh, example. I, just, um, I know we're a tidyverse group, but I just want to say that data table has a much prettier print method than Tibble. And I can't stand the way Tibble prints things. And that's, that's my piece. It's my last data table comment I'll make, but that's it. Okay. Um, so do they recommend using data table then? Um, data table is just a totally different um, modification on data frames. And it has a different way of like talking to things versus the tidyverse way of trying to do. Um, it's also faster. So if you have really, really, really big data, I recommend using data table. That's data table like that. In R. Okay. All right. Oh, they, oh, they, okay. This is two. Um, cool. Yeah. That, yeah. That brings us to the basically to the end of this. Um, so, yeah, so um, my question is, um, can you convert table to, I mean, convert data uh, table to, or to data frame? I think you could, just as, as data frame, if you wanted to. Because like there was a situation where I was working, I import the data and change it to table, and um, I was working something, it didn't work with table, but when I converted it to when I use it as a data frame before converting, it works. So I was searching, how can you convert a table to data frame, but I couldn't find. I think you just call as data frame. So for example, at least something that happens to me a lot is um, I use a lot of packages for RNA sequencing, which require row names. So I'm constantly having yeah. to like convert to table and then convert back to row name, um, to a data frame to keep row names. So okay. I think just calling as data frame or mm -hmm. there's a there's a tibble argument which is column to row names and I think that will implicitly force it to become a data frame. Ah, okay. So what you say is um, if I want to change the table to data frame, I will use as data frame. Ah, okay. So what is that one that you said um, uh, the table argument? What do you mean by that? Hello? Sorry. I can never remember exactly how it's typed. Um, so if you just call tibble column to row name, um, it will implicitly, I think, convert it to a data frame. Okay. And then you would just pick the column that you want as your row name. Um, OK. Gotcha. Nice. Thank you, Anna. All right, cool. So yeah, I think that pretty much brings us um, to the end. I mean, what's the like uh, sort of procedure now? <laughs> like, so last time we went through exercises. Um, today, I I have to run now. So at least we'll stop recording here. Um, otherwise. Yeah, we can go through the exercises um, if you want. The basically sprinkled throughout, um, but I have to run. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I to be honest, uh, 